Well, we got him loading in and out of the trailer without resistance. Stick around, Seth is gonna show you how. Welcome back to Becky Emil Horse Training, and we are here with the last call to streak. This is day six of handling him and halter breaking him. Today we are headed up for a walk up to the house where the horse trailer is parked and we're gonna work on loading in and out of the trailer. So this is day six. And if you guys have been following this series up until this point, or if you haven't, I encourage you to go back and take a look at what we've done to prepare this colt up to this point to get him ready for this particular technique and this behavior that we're gonna be working on today. Now it's really important that they walk up to the house for me like that because for the rest of their lives, whenever I cool them out in hand, I'm gonna be taking them for a lap up around the house. So they just have to be comfortable with leaving the general facility, leaving all the other horses and walking up by the house. I'll tie them up to the horse trailer like this. I might go inside the house. If I need to get a different coat or grab a snack, I go in and do that. We have started to hard tie this colt. And if you guys wanna see the steps that we took to get to this point, I have them on video. I just chose not to show them in this particular episode, but you can look back at the last two sessions and see how Seth prepared him for tying the first time. And so while Seth has him tied right now, he is going on the outside of the horse trailer and tying that gate open. So we don't have to worry about that gate coming around and smacking us or the colt. It's a pretty windy day today here in South Dakota. And you know, we have to take all the precaution measures we can. So I want you to notice how Seth approaches this colt when he comes back to the trailer. He goes to his head first and pets on him. And that's how he greets him. And the colt doesn't sit back. He doesn't put pressure on the line. He doesn't spook at him. Uh, that colt's telling us that he, he's been prepared properly and he doesn't have a hole on that side. Remember if we look back a couple sessions ago, or it may have been the last session, where this colt did not like Seth on that right side. So he's worked through some of those boundary issues that he's had, so to speak. So when Seth goes to put him in the trailer, um, he always goes back and reassures by petting him, releasing the pressure. He initially walks up in there and this colt just follows him up in there. I mean, it couldn't be any more textbook than that. And I'm gonna tell you guys, it's not all like that, all right? He's done a really good job of preparing this colt up to this point. I mean, look at what he went through on the bridge. If you didn't see that episode, you need to go back and watch the bridge episode because we sat there for like a good 45 minutes trying to get this colt to step up on the bridge. And so the fact that this colt is going right into the horse trailer like he is, is showing us that we've done our homework and this colt is ready for this next step in his training. Now, I'm not the best at teaching a horse to go into the trailer, and I'll admit that 100%. If you guys want to look back at what a train wreck it can possibly be, I'll share a video in the description box below and show you kind of what's gone wrong and what can happen when one isn't ready to go in the trailer and how you have to get it in when you're by yourself and you're in a hurry and you're trying to get to the vet. So by preparing this colt like this you know i'm really really pleased with his progress i'm really pleased with how seth has used a lot of patience and really focused and you know kind of dotted all his i's and crossed all his t's when preparing this colt to go in obviously it shows that he's done his homework you know especially you know going over those ground poles going over the bridge getting this colt to give to pressure making friends with him you know I have a firm belief that one of the reasons that horses will not go in the trailer with us when we try to lead them in is because they're not comfortable being in our space. And then when we go into these tight quarters like that with them, they don't want to be in there with us. But Seth has done a really good job of making friends with this horse. And so this horse doesn't, he's not scared. He's not intimidated. He doesn't feel the pressure when he's in that tight space with Seth up close to his face like that. I hope that makes sense. So Seth is gonna quit with that for now and he's going to rub this colt all over a little bit more. And one thing that I really like that he does here is he reaches over this colt's neck and kind of gives him this hug. And 
I swear if more horses had this done when they were younger and smaller, they would be better about all of their groundwork and about a rider getting on their back and kind of working all around them. You know, look at that hole that he took care of on that right side. This colt did not like him on that right side nearly as much a couple sessions ago. And he's getting pretty darn good with being handled from both sides now. Seth uses this opportunity to take his rope around his body and bend him around. And we see how Seth doesn't prepare his head nearly as well this time. And this colt wants to follow Seth, but now he's figuring out to follow and bend his body around and come back around. Seth kind of let him make his own choice there. You know, there's a moment there where, you know, at first Seth was kind of pushing his head away from him and trying to get him to follow the feel. And in this case, Seth just kind of bent him around by that rope and let him figure it out on his own. Now, if he'd have done that in the very beginning, it would have been a mess. But he's starting to gradually give this colt an opportunity to, you know, think for himself and follow the feel. He's going to do it on both sides before he calls it a day. And, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do this before had he not spent the time at the tie rail rubbing and brushing and petting on this colt all over. This colt wasn't handling being touched on his sides and on his hind end. He's much better swinging around to the left as expected. He's had a little tougher time on his right side, but that's okay. It'll get better with more work. We're going to go ahead and walk him back down. As usual, the dogs are up here with me. I've got Teddy, I've got Rocky and Weatherby. And, you know, Rocky and Weatherby, they just kind of follow along. They're just kind of part of the scenery. And Teddy's the one that tends to be a little bit more instigating, if you will. She's looking for a reaction. She tends to go to the head on the cattle. And she'll do the same thing with a horse. So as we head back down to the rest of the horses and back down to this colt's pen... Seth is going to stop and back this colt up. And the reason for doing this is because anytime we had the direction of home or back to the pen or to other horses, horses tend to want to get anxiety, get worked up, get a little bit barn sour. So Seth takes the opportunity to stop him and back him up and practice it before it becomes a problem so that he can use this backup behavior and technique when he needs it the most. So this colt is giving to pressure. He's taking steps backwards despite having three dogs around him, me walking behind him, and he's headed back home pretty calmly and quietly. He speeds up a little bit as they walk, but he's not ahead of Seth. He's not pushing Seth around. He's not walking all over top of Seth, and he's not nickering either. I'm really proud with how confident this colt is away from his friends and how reasonable he wants to be when you take him away from his buddies. And, and that's a big, big sign of this colt's mental capacity to learn when you take him out of his comfort zone. And he's going to be super, super reasonable long term. So this is going to wrap up our halter breaking curriculum with a last call to streak with Seth Carey. If we take a look back at all the behaviors that this colt has been trained, he knows how to lead. He knows how to stand tied. He knows how to pick up his feet. He knows how to walk over a bridge, be caught, be handled, have his face touched, have his body touched, uh, be led in and out of a trailer, um, give his head both directions, uh, let that lead rope wrap around his body. He's been exposed to dogs out working with him every single time he goes out. Uh, you know, he's left his, his buddies, he's left all the horses in his herd, so to speak, and he's handled it all really, really well. So from here on out, we're going to turn him out for a little while and leave him alone. We're going to let this colt grow up. We're going to let him be a horse for a little while. And then I'm going to do a refresher with him in a few months. And I'll try to get that on video for you. So I really appreciate you guys watching. I thank you for all your support on my channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I will include in the description box below the previous episodes. And please comment if you guys have any questions about this process. Thanks again for watching. I sure hope you have a great rest of your day.